Hello, my name is William Osmond, and earlier I was enjoying some popcorn while watching an episode of Wow, That's a Lot of Bees! Welcome back to Wow, That's a Lot of Bees! And I heard something strange coming from inside the TV. Oh, there's lots of bees! Oh, man, uh, there's a lot of bees. Oh, look at that bee, he's hungry! Oh my god! Ugh. So now that I don't have a TV, let's let's build one. But we're not going to build any ordinary TV. Thanks to the suggestion of Tom Heuser, we're going to build a mechanical TV, one of the first TVs ever invented. So that is the final result. What? We're also building a mechanical camera since you need to have something to show on the TV. The mechanical aspect is a giant spinning disc with a spiral of holes. And these holes will mask light out at different parts of the image. So if this cardboard cutout is the screen or the uh, image sensor size, as the disc spins, the holes pass across different places on the screen. To show you what happens inside of the camera, we've stuck an old lens into a cardboard box. And I have a piece of cardboard I can move back and forth behind the lens. And you can see at a certain point, the image actually appears on the piece of cardboard and becomes very focused. The mechanical TVs of the old day had to mechanically mask different parts of the image, so only one part of that projected image would get through to a single sensor. And that information was sent over a single radio wave, sort of one brightness value at a time, and the TV would then reproduce it. And so spinning fast enough, your eyes would sort of see the entire image, and it still wasn't great, but it was sort of the only way to do it. The simplest way, or, or the, I don't know. One of the challenges of the mechanical TV system was the disc in your TV and the disc in the studio camera had to be synchronized or the image would be, you know, it'd get out of whack. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that because we're gonna drive both discs with the same motor. It's laser time! <laughs> Let's go ahead and cut the spiral or the first disc. Ideally, I wanted to use like cardstock from like a cereal box, but I couldn't find anything anywhere without ordering a ream of like 200 sheets. This, you know, this is pretty rigid. I just don't know how much light is gonna come through. Maybe we'll like dye it black or something. I think the CAD model is at a point where we can try to test cut some pieces. It's not finished yet, and there's definitely gaps we're gonna have to fill as we get to, uh, at, to them. Let's cut a test piece out of cardboard of the main structure. Hmm. I think the laser might need some alignment. Maybe we can cut it out of wood now. I got a fart. Of course, that just barely doesn't fit. Uh, oh, there's that. I have bad news. Laser table saw. It's too big. I have a piece of wood that I can't laser table saw. Like most other other projects, I don't have all the pieces for this because we haven't designed all the pieces for this. This is a scrap piece that we're just gonna use to test fit and the laser wasn't aligned and so it didn't cut through the top hole. So I'm just gonna bust that out right now. Yeah, it looks good. The feet go on, like, yeah. I've got these flange bearings that I've used for like every project. I thought they were the same size since they were in the same bag, but it turns out they're not. I'm just gonna make the small disc a quarter inch and then the big one. Where'd the other one go? Did I drop it on the ground? I did. So this is how we're going to attach the lens. It's essentially a adapter, M42 to Canon, like EOS or EF or whatever the heck that one's called, and then put some screws in it. This is gonna go, yeah. What's that? two little shims that are the same thickness as the disc, and that is a spacer so that the disc doesn't get stuck between. Yeah. I've got a box of stuff from Eric Chattel, Chattel, and then we've also got more motors from Benny J2K. Do we want to use a drill motor or a brushless? Turn the hairdryer off! I forgot to cut an access hole. We could hook it up to the drill. You don't see anything really cool with the disc spinning because the light passing through the holes is already defocused. But if we replace the disc with a piece of matte plastic, you can see the uh, focused image projected. The motor is on and we're gonna do a test spin right now of the everything. I guess it's gonna be scary. Why is everything such a struggle? Hmm. 
No, the bolt came undone. That's like the least worst thing that could have happened. Oh, oh God, I just smoked one of these wires. All right, maybe we shouldn't push it that hard. Have you ever had one of those projects you started thinking it was gonna take a week, and then two weeks later? So we've got two methods that kind of failed for painting the disc darker. It's writ dye and Sharpie juice. I just took an old Sharpie and mixed it with some uh, alcohol. And the reason we want it to be dark is to block light from coming through the disc itself. We've got a fountain pen ink reservoir, a bigger Sharpie so we could just color the disc. We'll try the Sharpie first, maybe. This is satisfactory. I think we're at a, at a point where it's gonna block a lot of the light. I think we're on like day five now. I've struggled more on this project than I think any other project. Most of the problems have come from the camera side. So currently there is a circuit board on the back that has a photo transistor and an operational amplifier to amplify the signal. This is the signal. You can see the frames are uh, repeating patterns. Look at the vertical time between the two repeats. It's about 16 frames per second. Previously, you didn't really see an image and you should see an image and I think there's a lot of bleed through. So let's use the fountain ink, the fountain pen ink. The diffuser is covered in, it's covered in ink. Oh, oh wow. Oh my God, look at that. It's totally working, but it looks like it's out of sync or something. When the hole on the camera is up top, we want the hole on the disc to be on the bottom one. So let's get it to skip to like right there. Does this make any sense? Okay, I think basically what's happening is a light that comes through the center of the lens and hits the center is basically not brighter, but way more lights hitting the sensor. Whereas light on the top and the sides has to bounce off there into the sensor. So you end up with darker. Um... So we've made a high contrast uh, board for the classic key design. Why, well, hello there. Uh, turns out mechanical TV is easy. A mechanical camera is not easy. Uh, okay, it kind of works, but there's some issues. So I'm gonna spin it up right now. I know. The curvature is pretty bad. I don't know where that's coming from. So what we're gonna do is drive it with a function generator. Square wave, got two milliseconds on, two milliseconds off. Where's the trigger, there it is. And we're gonna change the speed of the driver. See, that looks close to like what should be vertical. Why would it curve back? I'm gonna call James, he's at work, I don't care. <laughs> Hey James, got a good suggestion to use the stroboscope for uh, detecting if the holes are lining up vertically. Yeah, so you're, we're seeing some big, some fatty curves here. Okay, this is the problem, or this is one problem. The holes on the discs are spaced by a constant arc length, and a constant arc length means the holes closer to the center have to have a wider angle. That's fine when the discs are identical, the spirals are in the same direction, but if I flip this disc to get the spirals in the opposite direction in order to flip the image. So this is the bottom hole of the camera disc and this is the top hole of the TV disc. So light coming in the bottom hole of the camera will be written to the top of the TV. So effectively that will flip the image vertically. Because of the constant arc length, the holes now don't line up. So you can see it drift. So now what I'm gonna do is take the disc back out, flip it so that the spirals are going in the same direction. So now the image will be upside down. And we could cut new discs at constant angle, but we've already painted these black and I don't wanna. This is the TV and camera actually working. And the video in the right corner is what we're holding in front of the camera. It doesn't work as well as I had hoped. The uh, camera turned out to be way more difficult than I could have imagined. You go down. There's a point where you gotta call it good enough and I think there's really not much we can improve without doing like a, a second iteration. Well, the main goal is to get like a face or a hand and I don't think without like an extensive overhaul we're gonna be able to get that with this. All right, boys and girls, we're doing this build video backwards. My real life narration sucks, so I'm gonna try to re-narrate the camera explanation right now. But the uh, photo transistor wasn't fast at the low light level, so we ended up using a small chunk of solar panel and then put a piece of uh, a headlight lens in front of the flashlight reflector to more efficiently guide the light into the uh, solar panel chunk. And the electronics was very similar, it's just a, an op amp with a ridiculously high gain. I don't know, this is a good start. Um, so version two, I think we'll share a disc. So there'll be one disc only and it'll have the TV and the camera. Don't have to worry about synchronization issues. I don't know when we'll get around to version two, but let's give away some t-shirts.
We found a random comment picker. William Johnson. I hope you live in the US. I need to make this more clear. If you don't live in the US, you either need to pay me for shipping or I'm not gonna send you a t-shirt because it's way too expensive. Gordon Fosse, Evan Mulkler. All right, Vidmix uh, Remo, you got randomly picked by this really actually kind of weird website now that I'm looking at the rest of it. What is going on? I feel like some, some of the more clever comments should get cash shirts too. Welcome back to Wow, that's a lot of bees. That's a lot of bees. Bees are everywhere. There's a bee. Oh, there's lots of bees. Oh man, bee everywhere. Oh, look at that bee's hungry. Oh, that bee's flying. Wow, oh, bees. cool bees. Oh, oh God, no. Oh, man. Yo, oh, it's like a that's bee way bee. too many bees. Uh, oh, I really like bees. Bees are the greatest. Okay, yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, yep, mm, I'm hungry. Oh, <laughs> bees everywhere.